On March 11, 1988, in the heart of Dallas, Texas, Tiffany Daniels was born. To all who met her, she was a vibrant soul with a passion for art and stood out in high school with her outgoing nature. Her family cherished her free-spirited essence, describing how she effortlessly uplifted those around her. Immersed in the world of creativity, Tiffany graduated high school and then found work at the Pensacola State College Theater in Pensacola, Florida, painting captivating sets that brought stories to life. Beyond her artistic pursuits, Tiffany embraced Pensacola's cultural delights and natural wonders. In the city's downtown, she orchestrated and attended blues and swing dance soirees. Near her residence, a stone's throw from the Bob Sykes Bridge to Santa Rosa Island in the Gulf of Mexico, she explored the dunes through hikes and bike rides. A pescetarian with a penchant for expressing herself through ink, Tiffany adorned her feet with tattooed images depicting a plant's growth and blooming. Despite her apparent contentment, financial woes lurked in Tiffany's life. Her parents noticed a pattern of covering rent for housemates who couldn't contribute. By the summer of 2013, Tiffany was in search of a new roommate. She posted an ad on Craigslist, and Gary Nichols, a 54-year-old separating from his wife, answered the call. Despite concerns about the age difference, Tiffany and Gary found common ground in biking and food, and best of all, Gary could pay his rent. On August 11, 2013, the day began with a bittersweet farewell breakfast for Tiffany's boyfriend. He had been accepted to the University of Texas in Austin. While still deeply connected to him, Tiffany hesitated to uproot herself from Pensacola and move back to Texas with him at that point of her life. Her new roommate, Gary, would later say that while Tiffany was obviously sad about the moving away of her boyfriend, but the blow was cushioned, knowing she would be visiting him in Austin in the near future. Later that day, she and Gary immersed themselves in the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail, the source of inspiration for an upcoming theater production of Spamalot that Tiffany would be working on. As night fell, Tiffany and Gary retired to their respective bedrooms with work awaiting them the next morning. At 5 a.m., a mysterious sequence unfolded. Gary Nichols states that at that time he was woken up by the noise of the front door. He heard the front door being opened and closed several times in a row. Peering outside, Gary had hoped to catch a glimpse of Tiffany, but found emptiness. Around 7 a.m., Gary Nichols embarked on his daily routine for work and noticed the absence of Tiffany's gray Toyota 4Runner. It was nowhere to be seen. Assuming she had already left for work, he carried on with his day. However, Tiffany's parents found this early departure unusual, as she typically rose just in time to meet her commitments. Tiffany, true to her work ethic, arrived at the theater that morning punctually and ready for her set painting duties. Something, however, was amiss. She sought permission from her supervisor to leave a bit earlier that day and mentioned the possibility of taking time off, perhaps the entire week, without divulging the reasons. Her supervisor granted the request, and she punched out at 4.43 p.m. as she exited the theater. That marked the last confirmed sighting of Tiffany Daniels. As night fell, concern crept into Gary Nichols' thoughts. By 10 p.m., Tiffany had not returned home, and calls to her went unanswered. Growing uneasy, Gary contacted his daughter, Noel, who suggested that Tiffany, as an adult, might be spending time with friends her age. Agreeing with this assessment, Gary retired for the night. The following day brought no relief as attempts to reach Tiffany remained futile. Returning home that evening, Gary discovered an unsettling detail. The electricity had been cut off. Suspecting a missed bill payment, he once again contacted his daughter, expressing the escalating worry. This time, Noel recommended reaching out to Tiffany's parents. Noel and Tiffany's mother, Cindy, embarked on a search, contacting all known friends of Tiffany. None had seen her all week, assuming she might be visiting others. Exhausting all leads by the end of the week, realization set in. They had to involve the authorities. The decision to report Tiffany Daniels as missing marked the beginning of a mystery that would perplex investigators and haunt those who cared about her. Cindy, determined to unravel the mystery surrounding her daughter Tiffany's disappearance, initially approached the Escambia County Sheriff's Office. However, she found their response dismissive, with the belief that Tiffany might have gone out for a night of partying and would resurface on her own. Unperturbed, Cindy redirected her efforts to the Pensacola Police Department, sensing a more proactive stance on the case. Detective Daniel Harnett took charge, meeting Cindy at Tiffany's residence to conduct a thorough search. Despite the meticulous examination, no signs of foul play emerged, and Tiffany's camping tent remained untouched in her room. It became evident that if she had left town, 
it wasn't for a camping expedition. Harnett, delving into Tiffany's personal connections, turned his attention to her boyfriend, who had recently departed for Austin. While the boyfriend was cooperative, providing fingerprints and DNA samples, and his phone records verified his presence in Austin throughout the weekend, the investigation took a deeper look. The possibility of Tiffany being affected by her boyfriend's departure surfaced, as she had exhibited a slightly subdued demeanor earlier in the year. Yet plans for the immediate future contradicted the notion of self-harm or starting anew elsewhere. Tiffany had organized a dance just two weeks away, indicating her commitment to upcoming events. Intriguingly, the investigation uncovered that after leaving work early, Tiffany briefly returned home. Gary Nichols, present at the time, was engaged in a phone call with his out-of-state girlfriend and did not recall Tiffany's presence. Despite skepticism about the oversight, police accepted Nichols's account, dismissing any suspicion of wrongdoing and acknowledging his role as the first to express concern about Tiffany's whereabouts. The puzzle deepened, leaving investigators with more questions than answers in the enigma of Tiffany Daniels' disappearance. As the news of Tiffany Daniels' disappearance gained public attention over the first weekend, media outlets reported on the case, and her friends and family took to the streets, distributing flyers in hopes of finding clues. The initial efforts bore fruit early the following week, when a jogger, familiar with Tiffany's family, made a startling discovery on August 20th, eight days after she was last seen. Tiffany's gray Toyota 4Runner was spotted in a parking lot at Park West in Pensacola Beach, near Fort Pickens at the western end of Santa Rosa Island. Inside the vehicle lay Tiffany's bicycle, cell phone, purse with wallet, clothes, paintings, a jug of water, and a jar of peanut butter. The car was towed to the police garage for examination, revealing two unidentified fingerprints, one on the door handle and another on the steering wheel. Residents near the condominium adjacent to the parking lot shared puzzling observations. One resident asserted that the car had not been there until two days earlier, while two others claimed to have seen a man exiting the vehicle on the day it was found. Detective Daniel Harnett delved into the timeline of the car's journey to the island, examining security camera footage from toll booths at the Bob Sykes Bridge. The footage indicated that the forerunner had passed through the tolls at 7.51 p.m. on the evening Tiffany disappeared but it couldn't be determined if she was driving. The car remained in the police impound lot, preserving its contents for potential future relevance. The mystery deepened as investigators found sand on the bicycle tires, but none on the car's floorboards. Harnett speculated that Tiffany might have gone for a bike ride on the beach and possibly decided to swim afterward, especially considering the ongoing Per Se meteor shower, an event she might have wanted to witness on the beach. However, no bodies were found on the shore and the absence of conclusive evidence left multiple possibilities open. With Santa Rosa Island spanning 50 miles and limited manpower, the police couldn't conduct an exhaustive search. The following weekend, the Class Kids, a volunteer organization, collaborated with local police and the U.S. National Park Service to search much of the island with humans and search dogs. While a few fragments of clothing and pieces of jewelry were discovered, they did not belong to Tiffany Daniels, leaving her disappearance shrouded in uncertainty. As the search efforts in Pensacola reached a standstill, Tiffany Daniels' friends and family turned to social media, creating a Facebook page to amplify their search. The page generated an influx of tips, with one notable report from a convenience store clerk, who claimed to have seen her days after her last confirmed sighting. The clerk described her foot tattoos, adding an initial sense of credibility. However, the account was discredited when the store's security camera footage failed to validate the sighting. In January 2014, months after Tiffany's disappearance, a more promising lead surfaced on the Facebook page. A waitress from Materi, Louisiana, outside New Orleans, reported a peculiar encounter shortly after Tiffany went missing. According to the waitress, a woman matching Tiffany's description entered the restaurant with two others, one around the same age and the other older, possibly Latina, and more elegantly dressed. The younger women behaved oddly, wearing long-sleeved shirts with cuffs pulled over their hands and avoiding eye contact. When the waitress mentioned the missing woman from Florida, the group abruptly left. Unfortunately, the restaurant's security cameras had been taped over, preventing any documentary confirmation of the sighting. Tiffany's parents found two compelling reasons to believe this was their daughter. First, the habit of pulling sleeves over her hands was something Tiffany often did when cold. Second, the waitress recalled the woman resembling Tiffany, asking about the broth used in the soups, reminiscent of a past incident where Tiffany questioned a restaurant about chicken broth substitution due to the unavailability of fish broth, 
a crucial detail given her pescetarian preferences. Fueled by concern and a lack of concrete answers, Tiffany's parents began considering the unsettling possibility that she might have left Pensacola involuntarily during the week between her last sighting and the start of the search. The notion of human trafficking surfaced as they drew parallels between Tiffany's case and another woman abducted from nearby Panama City, taken to New Orleans, and coerced into prostitution. Interstate 10, connecting Pensacola and New Orleans, is known as a major trafficking route in the U.S. Despite these concerns, Detective Harnett expressed that there is no evidence supporting the trafficking theory at this point, emphasizing that the investigation has not ruled out any possibilities. The mystery surrounding Tiffany Daniels' disappearance continued to elude resolution, leaving her family with more questions than answers. The second anniversary of Tiffany Daniels' disappearance in 2015 brought about two significant developments in the case. The Investigation Discovery Cable Network decided to feature her story on its revived series, Disappeared, which focuses on missing persons cases. A crew from ID visited Pensacola, filming locations tied to the case, reenacting events, and conducting interviews with Detective Harnett, Tiffany's parents, sister, and some of her friends who had assisted in the investigation. The episode, Shedding Light on the Mysterious Disappearance, aired in April 2016. Prior to the episode's broadcast, a breakthrough emerged in the case. In December 2015, following coverage of the case's second anniversary, a citizen came forward with crucial information. The individual reported having seen a man in his 30s, clad in red shorts and no shirt, opening the tailgate of Tiffany's car on the day it was discovered. This account aligned with the earlier statements of two witnesses who observed a man leaving the vehicle after it was parked in an unusual manner, facing oncoming traffic in an area designated for wildlife. This revelation provided a new angle for investigators to explore. As the 10th anniversary of Tiffany Daniels' disappearance approached, a mural depicting her and drawing attention to the case was painted on Pensacola's graffiti bridge. The mural served as a poignant reminder of the unsolved mystery and a plea for information that could unravel the secrets surrounding Tiffany's vanishing. Despite these efforts, the case remained unresolved, leaving Tiffany's family and investigators with lingering questions and the hope that continued awareness might one day lead to answers. If you have any tips or information regarding the disappearance of Tiffany Daniels, please call the Pensacola Police Department at 850-435-1900. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fireside Unsolved. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Until next time, take it easy and be easy, you filthy bastards.